So we just had Governor Chris Christie on. Uh, and it was really interesting, the little laboratory of that uh, debate the other night. Do you know who got the biggest bump coming out of it? And I, I'm not a big fan of the bump, OK, I, I, because you got to see what somebody does with that momentum and whether they can build off it. But, you know, because it's largely just about performance. But guess who got the biggest one? I'm looking at the numbers uh, right now. You know who got the biggest bump? Nikki Haley. Right. Because she wasn't a big part. But but Why? I think a lot of it had to do with demeanor and her ability uh, to kind of uh, step into a zone, not just as a as a woman, um, but as somebody who did check a lot of boxes and does. Uh, so isn't that interesting? Because Vivek, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, Christie, DeSantis with the meme with his face, you know, those were the things that got the resonance. Right. And the gotchas and all that. Who got the biggest jump? What does that tell you? There is a big disconnect. OK, between what the people who play the game and cover the game find interesting versus the people who are at home who are desperate from better for the people they give power to. All right. So Christie wanted to talk about Vivek Ramaswamy. Why? Because the 38 year old businessman is making noise and he is relevant in this uh, primary election. No question. He is relevant. We'll see what happens with it because he wanted the light. Now he's getting the heat. Here's what the governor had to say about our next guest. He's a young guy. Um, He talks like chat GPT. Um, But when you do the checking on his facts, you know, I said that, you know, he said when he said Trump was the greatest president of the 21st century, I said, that's not what you wrote about him in your book just last year. And he said, that's a lie. Well, of course, when you go to the book, as I know you have, you realize that I was telling the absolute truth now. Let's discuss with Vivek Ramaswamy. It's good to have him back on the show. Uh, Vivek, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, your poll numbers showed positive move. Uh, certainly, you're in the, the top echelon of uh, the candidates, and a lot of people didn't see that coming. But here you are. At the end of the day, uh, the proof is in the performance. Now, as I said in the intro, you wanted the light. You're going to take the heat. Uh, how do you feel about the level of scrutiny that you are getting and why you're getting it. I feel good about it, Chris. The answer is, if you can't handle the heat, you stay out of the kitchen. One of the rules I've applied in this campaign is we talk to everyone. Left, right, black, white, doesn't matter. If I'm going to run to sit across the table from Xi Jinping, I better be willing to sit across the table from anybody here at home that goes for media and my fellow competitors on that debate stage. And I think that the reason we're having this kind of success some of the polls coming out even today, having me now in second place solidly, is because I am speaking the truth without apology. And I've said this since the beginning. I'll say it again. I would rather share my convictions and lose this election than to win by playing some careful political snakes and ladders. But it turns out, Chris, that appears to be the winning strategy so far, and I'm going to stick to it. I Listen, I believe you, and I'll tell you why. Because I see a fundamental flaw uh, in your proposition, which is, Trump is better than you by your own description. He was the best as president. Disagree. Uh, he's the prohibitive favorite. But I don't understand how are you better than him if Trump's in the race? What do they need you for? You say, well, I'll bring people together. But you're echoing all of the divisive things that he says. So I, I don't get the proposition. Help me. Well, I respectfully disagree with you on multiple counts, Andrew, but I think that the, rea- the reality Andrew, is now we're going to go. At excuse it. me. <laughs> I was provoking you. <laughs> My so you mother can't does the, the same heat. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we'll give each other the That's heat That's the here. biggest insult so, you could have so, said. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. I'll tell your brother I said hello. But the, the reality is this, OK? <laughs> so I could take the Trump, Trump America first agenda even further by reuniting this country. And I think our base understands That even if Trump's the nominee, I think there is no one in the Republican Party who can win in a landslide election the way I am. Forty percent of our donors are first time ever donors to the GOP of any kind. That's unprecedented. Usually that number is two percent for a normal Republican candidate. I've campaigned from the south side of Chicago to the west coast to Kensington in the inner city of Philadelphia. My philosophy is no state left behind, no city left behind, no American left behind. I haven't talked to Zelensky, but I have talked to victims in Maui. And I think this is a big part of how I'm building a multi-ethnic working class coalition 
that I think can deliver a landslide like Reagan did in 1980. And many in our base understand deeply, Chris, that this has to be a moral mandate in this election, bringing people young and old, black and white. That's what I'm doing in this race. And that allows me to go even further than Trump did, not just building the wall, but using the military to actually secure the border, not just putting Betsy DeVos on top of the Department of Education, but actually having a clear plan for shutting it down, along with many other government agencies. So you're right. I do respect Trump. I think he was better than Bush and Biden and Obama, which is why I called him the best president of the 21st century. By definition, that's true, if you believe those things. But I'm leading the America First movement to the next level, and I think we're going to succeed. But that would mean, so if you're going to say, well, because I'll be a uniter, and you, know, you can say what you want yes. about Trump. He was not a uniter. So if... That is the thing. That's why I didn't get the the Presley comment about the KKK. First of all, you know that you do not analogize uh, a black member of Congress or a black anybody to a member of the KKK. You you know that. And, you know, I heard you say on the show yesterday, oh, but let's be intellectually honest. OK, let's be intellectually yes. honest. You know, let's be that, intellectually that is honest. Just Hakeem a, Jeffries, but you know, that's not a Hakeem place Jeffries to go. in a much more. In a, no, that's I, not I, united. I believe, let me just let, let me just be honest with you, Chris. I think the way we unite this country is having more open conversations in this country. There is a gap between what people are willing to say in private and what people are willing to say in public. And I think the way we get to national unity is by opening up those conversations and closing that gap. Some people think the way we get to national unity is by showing up in the middle and compromising. Good people believe this, even in the Republican Party. I reject that. I think the way we're going to unite this country is by reviving the principles that unite all of us as Americans across our diversity, being uncompromising about those principles. Those are radical principles, Chris. This nation was founded on free speech, open debate, self-governance, the unapologetic pursuit of yes. excellence. These but are radical the right ideas. To say These are not modern ideas. Th yes. Having the right to say something we both know is not the same as whatever you say is going to be right. And that's correct. That is so let's not, talk about the actual is, substance of it. When you say you don't go well, there, but this, I disagree. But what I'm because saying is, Ayanna Presley, I, I, I want to just, I want to just really clarify, Chris, go, for your go ahead, audience, please, please. so we're not just having a meta conversation about what I said. I want to be clear about what I said. Ayanna Presley clearly says these are her words, not mine. We don't want any more black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't want any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. Well, you know what? At points in our history, we have had people who have talked about black faces and brown faces to shut up, sit down, and do as they're told. You know who did that? Yes, the Grand Wizard of the KKK. So, yes, I know that's a little provocative, but that's just the truth of the substance of what she said with her it's own words. It's not provocative. And the reality is not when, Hakeem Jeffries, when Hakeem Jeffries said the same thing when he's comparing Donald Trump to the Grand Wizard of the KKK. Somehow the left-wing media okay. was fine with it. But okay. when I'm using Ayanna no, no, Presley's own words, then okay, there's an issue on, with it. And that's on. a double standard, and I will not yeah, abide it. it. But it's not a double standard. I'm with you. I'm it's saying be consistent. It's absolutely a double standard, Chris. When, and you know it. When people, <laughs> when people likened Donald Trump or other people uh, on the right to being Hitler-esque or Nazis or Gestapo, it's wrong. Uh, it is wrong. It's dead it wrong. Cheapens, it cheapens the poison of those things. Uh, absolutely. I'm with you on that. OK, fine. Uh, take it up with Hakeem Jeffries or whoever it is that that says. Yeah. It. However, Fair enough. you doing the same thing is not. Uh, but I'm not know, doing the same to thing. Some but, I'm not but here's what but, I'm saying. Here's, the here's thing. what I'm saying. Here's the thing. You I'm not doing the same thing because not all statements are equal. Not all statements Vivek, are equal. And I, here's and I just what think I'm it's saying. Open to, it's, it's worth having this discussion, Chris, which is a good point to make, which is I you're take not people moving at the needle. When, you're going to get attacked by the media. They, they give you know, the well, only thing you have going for you is that the media didn't jump on people for doing it with Trump. And when I would do it, I would get my butt handed to me for, uh, you know, uh, all these stupid whataboutisms and false equivalency and all this other stuff. You know, you can't make anybody happy right now in this business as a journalist, but it's not really your job. Here's what I'm saying. That's not the kind of dynamite that you explode in the conversation to bring people together. You will never be so Chris, a unity I candidate. Disagree. And that's why people yeah. are coming after you for what you wrote a year ago. When you wrote that book, so I was, you were Chris, dead honest about Trump second. and why wanna, you didn't like the I election. And you changed it Presley out of convenience. Point. Go Chris, ahead. Chris, I want to finish on the Presley point and then I'm going to address that. 
on the Presley point and the Ibram Kendi point, what happens I see on the left is many good Democrats are ashamed of those statements from Ayanna Presley, like the quote I shared, or Ibram Kendi's quote, famously, that the remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. But those views are guiding our culture from universities to corporate America to even behavior in government. And so the fact of the matter is we can't just ignore it, sweep it under the rug and pretend like it didn't happen. We have to smoke that out and have an open debate about it. Now, on your point about the comments about Trump, and I heard Christie's nonsense before, and I, with due respect, it is nonsense, because I think there's a difference between bad behavior and criminal behavior. And when we conflate the two, that's a danger to our country. So I am running in this race, in the same race that Donald Trump is running, for a reason. I think I am best positioned to lead this country. And I would have made very different decisions than Trump made in the aftermath of January 6th. I said it at the time. I say it today. But that is different than believing that it is a good thing or it is desirable for him to somehow be indicted in four different prosecutions right, in but the all, middle but you of an election where he's running. The prosecution as if it was a persecution instead of walking the same line you did in the book, which is he lost the election. We could make the elections better, but it wasn't rigged. He's a, he's about grievance that uh, that ate up our party and didn't become about Chris, anything more that we needed it to. You're not saying those things anymore, Chris, I, and I know why. Unlike, but it's not unified. Unlike many of my other unlike many of my other candidates on the Republican debate stage, I don't suffer from a Trump derangement syndrome. The fact of the matter is, what has changed is the man has been prosecuted four times. That sets a dangerous precedent in this country on novel legal theories that have never been used in the ways that they're being used here. We are skating on thin ice as the country. And I think once we set this weaponization of the justice system as a precedent in this country, that's not going to be good for Republicans or Democrats. It's not going to be good for the United States of America. And some people, Chris, when they say they want national unity, what they really mean is they just want to unify 50 percent of the people in this country and leave the other people out of it. I reject that. We have to unify all Americans. That's what the America First Agenda stands for. And we have to well, recognize and be willing to call out. And by the way, in the poll that came out today, I'm second place. It would be easier for me if Donald Trump were eliminated from competition. It would be. I'd have a clear path to first place in the Republican nomination and then win the general. That's mm. not how I want to win. And that's why I think it is so important for those of us who are competing against Trump to nonetheless call out the politicization of this prosecution. And I know that this Listen. is an obsession for the media. But I'm only answering the questions as asked. That is why Listen. I am standing on the side of principle Listen. here. It, it, it's an obsession with the media because you think that there's any definition of doing this job where you would ignore or sublimate the fact that you have four different indictments of the person who's leading the nomination of one of the two major parties in the country. Give me Which a break. Is dead wrong. We can't and avoid I've said it. it. And I've said it we, countless times. We, but we the can't, question is, how are we going to move forward? You can't Chris? not cover the Here's forward. what I'm saying. Even that, Mark, you want to move the needle. Good. God bless you in the pursuit because America needs it. But if you play these games like, well, the media is obsessed with him being prosecuted. We've never seen anything like it before. Of course, there's so going to be attention my on it. And, I, you're, the media's and you're benefiting from the attention. With my response you're, no, to it's this. Not, is it, but that's like saying we're obsessed with covering hurricanes. We're obsessed with covering injustice. We're obsessed Chris, with covering let's talk our about governance. The of course, that's the job. Let's talk about the that's substance. That's the job. How are they? we going to fix this problem? And I'm going to say something now that you and I may agree with. I think the problem in this country is that the people who we elect to run the government, they're not even the ones who actually run the government. It is the managerial bureaucracy in a shadow government without any accountability to the people. That's what's I have no actually problem draining with the lifeblood out of I, our I system. I have no problem. I think that you should campaign. talk about that. I think you should talk yes. about that all the time. And if people ask you about other things, what was in your book or anything like that, own it and pivot. Because the American people want to hear about that a lot more. But I'm telling you. This is what we need to be talking about. Is our, how do we listen, declare independence from China? The invitation how is open. How do we grow an economy? This is what we actually need to be talking about. The, and that's the invitation what this is, is focused open. about. And that's what we're going to succeed. The invitation is open. We'll I'm just saying on. that you you are legit on the top tier of this race now. It's early, but that's where you are. You are going to have a hard time talking about anything else with the media coming after you for these kinds of things, playing that kind of game. It is a volatile game. The media just went through it already with Trump. They got a whole new set 
of feelings about it because they're not going through that again. I promise you that. But you are welcome here to talk about what matters to the American people. This is the moment we're in where you're getting the light and the heat. So we'll discuss it, but we'll discuss other things as well. I'll see you going forward. Uh, America needs better. So I wish you all good things in making that happen. I appreciate the conversation and we'll continue it, Chris. Thank you. All right. Be well. We'll talk again. All right. We're going to take a break.